Today we're taking a look at the top six weapons that the pro players are using currently. And there is a professional Call of Duty League called the Call of Duty League. And we're going to be taking a look at the Vaznev 9K, Cast Off 74U, TAC 56, M4, along with the LAB and the X12. One very important thing to point out is they play by a completely different rule set. This is the first set of rules and this is what we'll see once ranked play comes out. And there's specific rules, obviously they're only going to play Search and Destroy Hard Point Control with these various maps maps and they just restrict it to those and then they have specific rules on those individual modes and then there's a ton of restricted items so essentially when they load up and ranked you're playing a completely different game some of these things are restricted just because they create imbalance some they're just completely broken so they kind of balance it out so there is a little bit of a skill gap within the game because the game isn't designed with a large skill gap. But before we get too deep in the restriction, we do have a sponsor. MMA fans, we got an unreal matchup head to head this week. Tune into UFC 281 this Saturday to check out all the action unfold between Israel Adesanya and Alex Pereira. But wait, there's something you could do right now to make it even more exciting. Today's video sponsor, DraftKings Sportsbook, the official betting partner of the UFC, is giving new customers an amazing deal. All new customers have to do to sign up is use promo code JGOD and bet $5 on either of the fighters before the fight actually starts. If you happen to pick the winner, you're going to end up getting $200 in free bets. That's right, $200 in free bets if your pre-fight wager of $5 or more on a fighter to win hits. Want even more action? Combine multiple bets like who's going to win, how long the fight's going to last, and more into one parlay to give you a shot at even bigger winning. And if you happen to be in a state where mobile sports betting isn't yet available, DraftKings Daily Fantasy is giving all MMA fans a chance to cash out this weekend as well. DraftKings is safe, secure, and reliable, and the best part is that you can deposit and withdraw your cash whenever you want. So download DraftKings Sportsbook app now, use promo code JGOD, and bet $5 on the UFC 281 fighter you think's gonna win. If they win, you end up with $200 in free bets. That's code JGOD this Saturday at DraftKings Sportsbook, the official sports betting partner of the UFC. Welcome back. So what we can see here is the battle rifles, all restricted. Shotguns, all restricted. Light machine guns, all restricted. Marksman rifles melee weapons specifically the riot shield you are allowed to run around with the knife uh we do have the launchers basically all of them blocked out they're not allowed to use silencers but normally that's the case if the minimap functions so maybe that'll change lasers they're not allowed to use lasers even though some are specifically great for improving your aim down sight they just do not use them at all armor piercing all completely removed then we got tacticals all of those removed lethals all of those removed perks Almost all of those gone from the ultimate perks. All of those gone. So they're kind of restricted. They don't even use a fourth perk, to be honest. It's just the three. They keep it balanced. Almost all of the fill upgrades and then almost all of the streaks. They kind of leave, leave a couple streaks and they just work around with those. And that's kind of their restrictions. But even on top of that, they do these things called gentleman agreement where they just decide that they're not going to use a specific weapon. And that goes beyond the regular rules. And they just say, hey, you know what? If we're going to be in this. I don't think we should use this. They vote on it and they decide they don't want to use a specific weapon. One of those weapons is the STB 556. So I would definitely recommend using that one. They're GA in that one because it's overpowered, broken. Uh, and another one on that list is the cast off 74U, kind of walking that line. And there's a couple others in the mix where they're deciding on it, but currently they are using the Vaznev 9K. And right here, they're using the Lockshot KT85, which right here you can see it's helping a horizontal recoil control, vertical recoil control, and then they are taking a hit to aim down sight. So they're rocking with that one. And then they are using the stock. So they're only using three attachments. So this specific stock, aim walking speed, which is strafe speed. So you get a little bit more mobility there. And then sprint speed, which isn't all that important for the build. And then we got true tack grip, which is helping sprint to fire speed and aim down sight speed. So pretty much that's all it is. And you can kind of see this build in action. Overall, not the craziest aim down sight, but still pretty good. Not a ton of recoil. You can kind of see how I can control it even at range. And they're obviously professional players. They do this for a living against the other top players in the world. And they can just get a lot of practice in on not missing shots or whatever the case is. If you were to take this build, you can actually modify it slightly. If you want a laser, go ahead and put on a laser. You got aiming stability, aim down sight speed. Boom. And there you go. You got a little bit better aim down sight speed. If you want a bigger mag, you can go that route, even though that does slow you down quite a bit. And then you can go with an optic. Maybe the recoil is a little too high for you. Maybe you could drop the rear grip or the rear stock and kind of modify it based off of that. And that's kind of the build I would use. I would just take their build, modify it slightly, and you kind of have an idea there. Cast off seven for you. Like I said, it's going to get gentleman agreement. 
because it's too good. And this is kind of the build that they rock with, which may be a little bit challenging for some because you can see the barrel is hurting your recoil, but aim down sight is being improved. We have the agent grip, which helps your hip fire accuracy as well as idle sway at the cost of your walking speed, which isn't really a huge deal. And then we got the true tack for the same reason, as long as the Markeep R7 stock. You can kind of see how that works out for sprint speed as well as aim down sight speed. And they're kind of solving for the same things because they got crazy good recoil control. They're gonna be able to control this weapon at pretty much any range. And that's kind of how you'd build this one out. And you're able to take out three people. They do play 4v4, so they don't have to actually worry about that other target um, popping in. They're, they're accurate enough to be able to take people out, get the three kills, get a reload in, you're good to go. Just like the other one, you could put on a laser to prove aim down sight speed. Depends on how you want to build that out. And there's that build there. And that's going to bring us to the TAC-56 and the M4, which is what they're using for long range. They're going to probably change this as time goes on as they decide other weapons. Like I said, the STB, they just said, oh, we can't use that because we're not going to use that. You can see they're utilizing all the attachments. A laser would make this a little bit faster. Iron sights on this are amazing. And you can see for the long range, they're kind of solving for recoil stabilization, aiming stability. They don't worry about aim down sight speed. You got aim, uh, damage range, hip fire accuracy, and bullet velocity. So the bullets go where you want. You got the horizontal recoil control as well as vertical. And then this one's for recoil control. And then we got this uh, this one also for aim down sight. So you got a couple trade-offs there and you kind of how they're building it out. And you can kind of see this one. It doesn't really move all that much. Even at the target at 50 meters, relatively easy to hit. M4 is going to follow that same build. It is going to be a little bit slower, but they don't use an optic. You could use a laser if you want a little bit better, faster aim down sight. They're pretty much solving for the exact same attachments here that we just saw. Bullet velocity, damage range, recoil control, hip fire. Very similar, slightly different. Same exact muzzle. Phase 3 grip, we could kind of see that. And then we got this Sakin ZX grip with the recoil control and then this one also so this was going to be a little bit of a slower weapon uh, But it's also not going to have recoil so you can kind of see it's a little bit slower If you jump it's even slower and you kind of have this built in where this is your no recoil long range gun I thought they would have gone with the 556 maybe not enough of an experiment with it in terms of recoil But this is your no recoil m4. This is literally the no recoil, but it's also your slow pre-fire, I'm holding a head glitch, M4. So you kind of have that built out, pretty straightforward class setup. Then that brings you into your sniper build, uh, which is gonna be the LAB 330 combined with the X12 pistol. They usually do this because they're not gonna have another primary, they, they can't run overkill. So a lot of times they're either running the pistol or they have the knife, depending on normally, a sniper, they're gonna run with the pistol, and that's kind of how you build out. They are kind of experimenting between this sniper and the other one, but this is the build that I kind of saw from them. You got the ZLR padded, and this one's solving for the aim down sight speed. Even though recoil control, they're not gonna be able to spam multiple shots. They're holding an angle as soon as someone cross, they get the snipe off, and then that's it. This one's for faster rechambering speed, and then we also have a high velocity, so the bullet goes where you want as well as these bullet velocity ones. So this one is a little bit slower and you can kind of see how this one plays out when it comes to aim down sight it is a little bit slower, but in this case they would hold an angle as soon as the person comes across and you get the snipe. And the pistol, this one is a great one. I like the fully auto one, especially if you put the big mag on there. Pistols you can get away with a lot of mobility, but we got the rear grip, which is helping with the fast draw, trigger, you get the faster trigger. We got the Corvus Series D, which helps with that horizontal recoil, like I mentioned earlier. And then we also have the bullet velocity as well as recoil control. And this one overall, you can kind of see how you would use it. And you're able to take out targets. Those are like 20 meters. You wouldn't really expect to take out those. These would be like your finishing kill. Like maybe you got a snipe or you're going around a flank. You've already used your sniper ammo. You got to be able to make the adjustment. This is what you would use on those targets even further away where you're able to hit the 50 meter shot. Pretty straightforward. And like these both, you can add that laser if you want a little bit better aim down sight. Those are currently the top six weapons that the pro players are using in Call of Duty. Appreciate all the support. Thank you for watching as always. Have a great day.